Hey guys, this is Barb from Hedis World. Today we are going to make pineapple beer. Stay tuned. We're Bob and Barb. We've lived by the rules all of our lives, but in 2020 we threw that rule book out the window. We sold our home and moved full time into an RV with our cat Amelia, and from now on we will be living life our way. Don't you want to come travel in our world? I want to introduce a new series that we're going to be doing called Eating Healthy in an RV. And we are going to have all kinds of recipes from making pineapple beer, to dressings, to delicious pizzas, to crackers, to bread, to pasta, you name it. We are kind of on a journey ourselves where we are working on trying to eat healthier choices of meats. We are looking at the carbs that we're taking in. Um, and I know you're like, pineapple beer, pineapple's full of carbs. We'll talk about that in a second. We are working on trying to make ourselves healthier. You know, we have a lot of living to do and we want to be the most healthiest we can be so we can get out there and enjoy the journey of every place we go. And I thought, let's share some of these recipes with you guys. So of course, we're going to start out with pineapple beer because that's what makes sense. <laughs> so. Pineapples are typically not something that are low in carbs, but what you use in this recipe is actually the skin because we're going through a fermentation process and within five days we are going to have beer. And I'll explain this whole process as we go along, but first let's get started with the recipe. Okay, so we start out with nine cups of water that are going to go into here. You want to use filtered water. Um, we have a filter that filters our water when it comes in. We also have a softener outside, and then we run it through our Berkey. Our Berkey is incredible, and it changes the taste of water. It makes it very clean and pure. But what you're going to need here is nine cups of water. Okay, so first off, this one is going to be a recipe that I did not create but I am working on perfecting it as I go. This recipe actually comes from Gone with the Wind. They used to be RVers, and they are uh, now our um, sailboaters uh, sailing around the world. So when they were in isolation, they came up with the process of fermenting for the pineapple to make pineapple beer, and they also do a ginger root beer. So I will link below their video and their blog that covers all that as well, but we're gonna show you here how we do it. So first off, you're gonna take your pineapple, you need to cut off the top, which you are not going to need, and then you're going to cut off the bottom, and you're not going to need the bottom either. That just makes it a little more sturdy on your cutting board. Now, you need a fourth of an inch in, and also something to think about is your pineapple. This one's probably not as ripe as I want it to be. You want it to be very yellowy. You don't want it to be super green, which this one's not. Super green means that it's not ready and you don't want it to be super dark and almost black because that means it's about to be stinky. <laughs> so a yellow, a golden yellow is more, of a, a more um, of a better thing to have. But in Tennessee, this is probably about as good as we could get right now. <laughs> What's going to be going in our water today is the actual skin of the pineapple and about of a fourth of an inch of the actual pineapple. And this whole process of fermenting is the skin is gonna go in here. We're gonna have uh, sugar, which we'll talk about the sugar and the choices that we use. And then we also have got some champagne kind of uh, brewer's yeast. So this is definitely the kind of yeast that you wanna use for this. And what happens over a one to five day period, and I'll tell you why that matters down the road, is that the, the yeast is of course gonna eat up all the sugar that you put in here. And it's also gonna eat up all the sweetness out of here for the most part depending on how long you ferment it and the temperature that your RV is at. So if it's 85 degrees in your RV, just to give you a good example, you'll be able to ferment and turn this into beer in two days. And it is a beer flavor. Um, it's, it's actually not too bad. This is the second time that we've made it. So it is a beer flavor. Um, and it does have a teeny bit of like a sweetness to it, kind of takes off the edge. But we actually did five days. Five days is what we needed to do in our RV because our RV is not always at 85 degrees. I mean, if you're in a tropical climate, you could probably do this and have it setting outside and get it done a lot quicker, but you just want to keep it out of direct sunlight. Okay, so back to the recipe. So basically, you're going to be cutting down the side of the pineapple and keeping that fourth of an inch with you the whole time. So you end up with a piece 
that looks like this. All right, so let's get these cut real quick. Now the pineapple itself, when you're done with it, is still a healthy thing to do. Just because we're not doing a lot of carbs doesn't mean you cannot do more stuff with your pineapple. I am actually thinking about doing a jam with mine um, and doing some different sugars and stuff. And it's got a little of a bad piece here. Um, but um, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of things you could do with it. Something that the winds do is they chop it up and put it into, um, cut it up into like ice cube size lay it on the tray, freeze it in your freezer, bag it up, and then whenever you have a mixed drink or you have something fun or even when you have your pineapple beer, you throw this in here and it gives you a little bit more of a pineapple flavor. So for now, this delicious, delicious piece of pineapple is gonna go back into the fridge. The best thing now to do with these is I cut them into strips. And I'm gonna make them into little squares just to make it easier for them to, to um, be dissolved kind of and absorbed by the yeast and everything in the beer. So not that I'm perfect by any means, but you have two different kinds of sizes here, but that's fine. So basically you're going to cut them almost into cubes. So you've got them cut up like this. So then we're going to go ahead and put these into the water. And we cut up this one piece and then I'm going to go ahead and get my yeast going while I finish up the other pineapple then after this. So for the yeast right here, I've got a little bit of water started and I'm going to put in a little bit of our brown sugar, just a half a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna put in half a teaspoon of our yeast and then I'm gonna stir it up and let it set. What basically is happening is you are activating the yeast. Okay, and basically, what happens is this packet size will be good for two of these servings of beer, just to kind of give you an idea. So we'll get this stirred up. This is an important step that you do this and you let it set and you get it to the way that it needs to be, otherwise your fermentation process won't work. I'm probably a little more nervous today because this is my first food video because I love to cook, I love to can. Um, I enjoy challenge, I enjoy figuring things out, doing things from scratch, um, and it's also very stress relieving. <laughs> and Bob is also very good at it. So for now I'm going to finish cutting up the pineapple. Now besides trying to eat healthier, we're trying to be a little bit more self-sustaining. So like when we were down in southern Texas, we found uh, sour oranges, key limes, lemons and I was able to get them free or either fairly cheap. And we have a big juicer, so I squeezed the crap out of them. So now I don't have to buy lemon juice and lime juice or even uh, juice, orange juice, which we use put into our uh, waters and stuff um, because I already have it. And it has no chemicals and no preservatives. I mean, I'm super sensitive to a lot of different things and <laughs> I have uh, had different rashes and stuff over the years that have popped up and it's helped me to get rid of it for the most part by choosing to get away from a lot of the preservatives. I mean, not that all preservatives are bad. Uh, there's a lot of natural preservatives that are good, but most of the processed stuff that you see, is not good for you. And it's been a, a learning process of growing of, you know, what works, what doesn't work for us, what helps us, what makes us feel good, what gives us more energy. And this has been a pretty good road for us. And I'm also learning and teaching myself how to make good desserts because I'm a sweet kind of girl. I know I'm so sweet. And then Bob likes beer. And actually I liked this too because I'm not a big beer person, but I did like this. So this was a success for us, you know, so then you're having something fun. And then I've got a couple of other drink recipes down the road that I'll do for you too that are kind of fun. Um, but for now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my sugar. We use brown sugar, so it gives it a little bit more of a different taste, which we like. Um, and it's a, um, a really good brown sugar. It's a monk sugar. So it's, a, it's actually a blend of monk fruit and erythritol, but it's very good. It breaks up very fine. So let me get this sugar into my container here. Is it hard to cook in a 44 foot RV? I have a luxurious kitchen, so that of course is a no for me. 
but you can do anything in your RV. You know, you we we are not big grillers outside. We use our Instapod and we use our, um, it's got a, uh, an air fryer inside the Instapod. We use our oven, our cooktop, our convection. Um, it's great, we love it. Oh, I need a big spoon for stirring. And something I didn't also mention in the beginning that I should have mentioned is that we do wash our pineapple very good because you're buying it from a store and you know if you can buy pineapple fresh right from a vendor which I don't know if we have fresh pineapple growers in the United States I think we probably do but I you know I bought this at a store in Tennessee so this is probably more of a chemical spray pineapple so I scrubbed it really good just with water you know and, and washed it off and actually a little bit of apple cider vinegar just to make sure it was really clean so we don't have any issues or you know stuff like that so that's important too all right so my yeast is still bubbling so we will be back in a second when the yeast is ready oh but first off how does this fermentation process work this is a, a jug that actually the winds recommended so i got it off amazon and i'll put the link below but this screws on top and then as it ferments the gases come up so the gases have a way of coming up and going through here and are released up here so you're not having to do any kind of funky stuff it's not difficult i screw this on i kind of look at this each day i look at this i take the lid off and every day i take a little taste first few days is going to be probably be super sweet but by day three, I started getting that beer taste. Like I said, the warmer the environment that this is in, the quicker it will ferment. There are soda strain bottles, but they work fine. Is we strain this off um, or put it through a strainer and put it into here and then um, we refrigerate it. And it is it's kind of bubbly and it's got a pretty good, nice beer taste. And the alcohol level is 3.6%. Now, I'm a pretty easy drunk, I'll just say that off the bat, so it doesn't take much for me. Bob, even though we don't drink a lot about a lot anymore, um, it's still pretty good. But one glass of this was pretty good to get him tipsy. So um, it's, it can be kind of a lot of fun also. Um, but it's fun to make for parties or events. And when you make this, it can be however you wanna make it. If you wanna use regular brown sugar or or, or, or you know raw sugar whatever you want to do is fine don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it I'm just kind of giving you a recipe and the idea is to get you thinking put that thought in your mind and then you can turn around and turn it into your own and then you can send me back a video or some comments about how you do it and that would be super cool a community of how to make things better for everybody <laughs> okay so let me give you one more tip on um, something fun to do before you um, do your yeast Something else that we do is we just start, stopped at a place called Peyton Joseph of Arkansas Center and it was like a farming place and I was able to get fresh leeks and then all I did was you clean them really good, you cut off the leaves, you slice them into these little ribbons and a, and a leek is kind of from the onion family so it's got kind of like a little sweet of onion smell to it so this can be used for stews or casseroles or um, any side dishes that you might be thinking of, but you simply slice it up and put it onto like a little plate laid in your freezer just to kind of give it a start of a freeze. And then you um, put it in your bag and freeze it. And depending on how quick you use it, you can put it in a regular bag like I have, because I'm gonna be making, I think, a soup soon. And if not, I do have a thing that seals, sucks it up and seals it, and then keeps it for whenever you might be using it. Okay, so with that said, proofing is an old method back in the day, way back in the day, when they didn't have good shelf life for yeast and they didn't know how long it would last, so they proofed it, so then you knew that it was active. Ours is definitely active and working, so it's got a little bit of bubbles, it's got the foam that's in there that you should see, and then you're just gonna pour that little bit in there and you're gonna stir it up really good. And then you're going to attach your little lid this is a glass jar the lid is plastic and then this is plastic also and then that's it and then i pretty much set it over kind of in my window still because we don't have a lot of sun coming in the one window over here and i'm going to let it set and we will get back and test it over the next few days until we have it and we'll tell you what we think so stay tuned we're going to be doing a tasting now just to kind of see how the pineapple beer is coming along this is one whole day of it fermenting, and remember, it should go anywhere from one to five days. 
I'm the guinea pig. And it's not ready. We'll both try it. Can good enough for both of us? Yep. Starting. Wow, it's already starting. It has a bit of a beer flavor taste to it. It's still got a pineapple taste too, so it's a little bit sweet. And the one thing I forgot to mention is you do need to put some water up in here to help create some pressure, you know, for gases coming up and holding it down. Just yeah, you to don't want the all the gas going. escaping because you want to, you want that ferment process going. Our only problem is right now in our park we're in right now, the weather's only getting about 60 degrees and this yeah. needs to be about 75, 80 degrees. Yeah. So we had it in the window in the sun, yep. hitting on it. We said, then, we, um, then we wrapping it with a, uh, with a with a kitchen towel. Yep, we give it a little coat, and then we we had it over in the sun today. But actually, when you touch it, it's warm. Yeah, it's that's the gas and fermentation. Yeah. So. so I would say this is probably going to go five days, but we'll do another. All right, I wanted to give you guys a little more extra information on this since we've made it a couple times now, just to make sure it's clear. We are making a pineapple beer. The official term is tapachi pineapple tapachi and it's actually a Mexican fizzy drink and when you're making it depending on your fermentation process of one to five days you could be making a soda or you could be making a beer um, I recommend it as a beer it's pretty good uh, when you use the white sugar you get a little bit more of the kind of golden color like a beer and when you use the brown sugar you get more kind of like a little more of a darker looking beer you can also carbonate it to give it a little bit more fizzy and you can also add some spices and spice it up if you want. So it's kind of definitely a lot of fun to do and I, I definitely recommend that you try it. And remember, you don't have to do it our way. It's pineapple skin, it's water, it's sugar, it's yeast, and you can use any sugar you want that makes you happy. And the pineapple itself has yeast on it, so that's part of the fermentation process as well. Whatever sugar you put in, whether it's more of an alternative healthy for you sugar or it's a regular sugar, um, it doesn't matter. The yeast is gonna eat it up, get rid of it, and you know, make it into a beer for you. So, I hope that you liked this video. This is new for us, and it's something that I wanted to do to share a piece of me with you. Uh, Bob will probably be sharing some stuff too because he is also an excellent cook. Um, but we want to show you how we can stuff, how we find fresh stuff, what we do with the fresh stuff. Um, I hope that you liked the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, listed below will be the recipe and, and the links and the links to the wins and all that stuff. If you're interested, click the little word that says subscribe in red and subscribe to our channel because you will find not only recipes, but you're gonna find adventures that we're doing in our full-time RV and our Canon Spider. And also, if you wanna get notified, click the notification bell, and you'll know when our videos come out. So once again, I'm Barb from Hedis World, so come travel in our world. Bye.